Do you have a plan to increase security in places like that? The district has up-to-date and well-tested emergency response plans. This program was produced by Lenape District Television. Good afternoon and welcome to today's girls playoff across game between the Shawnee Renegades and the Lenape Indians. My name is Ethan Hartley and this is Joe Melagrana. What do you expect from today's game, Joe? Well, Shawnee's coming in as the uh, sixth seed. Uh, Lenape's the second seed. Both teams have very similar records. Uh, Shawnee is looking to avenge two losses only one by one goal. Uh, Shawnee's last loss was about a month ago to Lenape. They whipped off eight wins in a row. We should be in for a great game today. Great. Thanks, Joe. We'll be right back after these messages. Today's game on LDTV Sports, sponsored by Deborah Heart and Lung Center. For care that's extraordinary, demand Deborah.org. Comegno Law Group, specializing in general and special education law, representing individuals, families, public boards of education, and independent schools. 888 313 IDEA or ComegnoLaw.com. Zally's Fresh Kitchen Catering at ShopRite of Medford. For parties large and small, business and family, and more. Fresh ideas, fresh ingredients, fresh results. 855-ZFK-MENU or on the web at zallysfreshkitchen.com. And by Heads Up, Eyes Forward. Please never drive distracted. www.lrhsd.org slash heads up. For information on how your business can become a sponsor of LDTV Sports, contact Joe Malagrana. LDTV Underwriting Manager at 609-268-2000, extension 8680, or by email, jmelagrana at lrhsd.org. Hello, welcome back. We should be beginning very soon, both teams continuing their warm-ups. Getting loose, ready to get going here today. And we couldn't have a more beautiful day, a little little windy, but uh, much cooler, less humid uh, than the last couple days. And uh, these players are going to love that weather today, and I think the crowd also. Absolutely beautiful weather. Sun's out. It is now time for the excuse me. It is now time for the AXA Equitable Silo Report, providing millions of customers with life insurance, annuities, and other need-based products since 1859. AXA Equitable. Be life confident. 732-452-7275. Let's send it down to Alexa Henry with the report. Thanks, guys. I had a chance to speak with Coach McGorry of the Shawnee Renegades team to play with heart, confidence, and composure. She also said that to limit their turnovers, to limit their turnovers, and to just play with fun. I also had a chance to speak with Coach McCarthy of the Lenape Indians, and she said that she wants her team to continue to play with heart and confidence that they've had all season. Back to you. Great. Thanks, Alexa, with the Axa Expo sideline report. Both teams still continuing their warm ups. Right, we mentioned in the pregame that uh, both teams have similar records, and we'll get back to that after we do the keys. It's now time for the Axa Expo keys to the game, providing millions of customers with life insurance, annuities, and other need based products since 1859. Axa Equitable, be life confident, 732 452 7275. And for Shawnee, we have Make Lenape work hard on defense. The defense from uh, Lenape is uh, senior laden, uh, as uh, compared to, uh, as contrast anyway, to the other parts of the team, a little bit young. Shawnee's going to be working on that 
senior laden defense. And for Lenape, we have capitalized on offensive chances and shots. Yeah, basically for both teams, uh, you know, you get to the second round, teams are usually very, very even, so any you know, chances that they have, they have to capitalize on it. And for both teams, make smart decisions that play with composure. Yeah, again, for both teams, uh, you can't get caught up in the moment. This is a big game, uh, a lot of coverage, a lot of people are here, the, you know, uh, uh, newspapers are here and all. Uh, they can't, can't get caught up in that and play their game. And there you have your X equal keys to the game. <laughs> As we're warming up here, uh, again, we mentioned that, uh, or Alexa mentioned that head coach for Lenape is Jill McCarthy. She's a 12 years uh, head coach. She has a current record of 184 and 79. And four year coach uh, to, for uh, Shawnee is Julie McGrory. And we'll be right back after these messages. We're here today to uh, support SOS, support our students. Um, they're an organization that are trying to uh, get the budgets a little bit better for the school districts in New Jersey. The mission of this rally is to shed light on the, on the fair funding formula, which is not a fair funding formula. We really have to think about the education of our children in the state of New Jersey. New Jersey is known for producing graduates prepared to succeed. The Lenape Regional High School District is one of those districts that help New Jersey boast such great success. If we don't find a better way to create revenue and fix the flawed school funding formula, our districts and our state's great reputation for student success is at risk. We want to just get the word out to the New Jersey Senate that they need to change the funding formula to make sure that funding across the state of New Jersey is fair for all public schools and for all public school students. I'm here today to help support fair funding for every school because each child needs an equal education and have an equal opportunity because we're our future. We're going to be cut about $8.3 million over a course of seven years and over $24 million to our region and we're here so that the local legislators, the people that are making decisions on where the money is going to go from the state of New Jersey, we're here so they hear our voice, so they understand that these cuts will hurt our programs for our students. I want for my younger siblings to have the same experience I had, which was amazing, and to, for them to have the same opportunities I did. It's important for us to be here to show character of our students and our faculty and what it means to us. Um, obviously, we don't think that they're fair to a lot of the schools and the stuff that's going on to um, you know, make uh, the payment for stuff for us that we have to pay is, uh, much higher. So we don't think that's fair for everyone. So we're here today to kind of protest that and kind of voice our opinion and let, uh, let everyone else know that we don't believe that that should be happening. We're slated to lose a lot of money and uh, we've been doing, we've been very fiscally responsible over the years and we're doing everything we can and these, these uh, cuts in our state funding is going to hurt and we're trying to do everything to protect the programs and our, and our building. We want to get the governor's attention. We want to get the Senate Budget Committee's attention. We want to get the legislators' attention so they can understand that these cuts impact our students. These cuts are real. As a high schooler, you want to have opportunities and learn what you want to do and see what you want to have in your future. But if we cut funding, then you're technically taking away part of our future. We've come through and had such a good experience at Seneca, and we just want everyone else to be able to have that experience, especially the kids that are in Education Station now. They'll be going to Seneca, and I would just love for them to have the same experience that I've had, not just through Seneca, but in elementary school as well. They have babies, like infants there, to after school, like middle schoolers, seventh grade, and we work there to help out the kids, and I'd just love for them to have the same experience as us at Seneca. This is something that's going to directly affect the students of the um, school district, so I think it's uh, really important for the students and the people that are actually going to be affected by it to be here and kind of giving their voice and making it known that uh, this is something that we care about and this is something that we're not going to just, you know, let happen. We're going to try to do our best to help ourselves out. The time for our students and our staff and our community members voices to be heard is now because this is the time that they are going to be deliberating on the governor's budget. I think we all just need to um, raise our voices. We need to make it aware that this is happening and that it needs to be fixed and we should do that now. Because it's time for change now. The community members can get involved, they can write letters, they can call the governor's office, they can call Dr. Steve Sweeney's office, they can reach out to their legislators, and they can join these rallies. The people in the community should 
you know, kind of take charge a little bit more, um, voice their opinions. A lot of people are kind of afraid to because they don't feel like it makes a difference, but it definitely does. Uh, I feel like if um, people just spoke out about the things that they believe in and um, we voiced our opinions and let people know and did more demonstrations like we're doing here today, then I think that that can make a difference. Hello, welcome back to this afternoon's game. Both teams getting their last minute huddles in. Coaches getting their last minute word in before we start today's game. There you see Shawnee. Again, getting their last minute coaching in before we start today. And for the Renegades, the projected uh, starting lineup is number nine, Kelsey Martin, also a captain. Number 10, Jamie Carvin. Number 14, Julie Cassidy, leads the team with 62 goals. Number 21, Lauren Jobes, also one of the captains. Number 22, Meredith Farley. Number 24, Macy Moore. Number 27, Emma Sears. Number 33, Sammy McDonald. Number 40, Logan Anderson. Number 43, uh, Lauren Jobes. Number 48, Kayla Lumberg, also one of the captains. And starting for the Renegades in goal, senior. Uh, number 72, Ashley Verney with a Vernon, excuse me, with 104 saves. For the Lenape Indians projected lineup, number one, Audrey Cashin, number three, Allison Halfpenny, number four, Kylie McNamara, number seven, Lena Nielsen, number nine, Gianna Monica, who's a freshman and leads the team with 83 goals. Number uh, 10, Lauren Con Conroy, number 12, one of the captains, senior Caroline Barlow, she has 31 goals. Uh, number 13, Lauren Dixon. Number 15, Kylie Bresley, also one of the captains. Number 18, Caitlin Harvey. Number 21, one of the other captains, Erin Scioli. And in the nets, number 99, Jillian Corsese. And there you have your starting lineups for today's game. Should be underway very, very shortly. I stand corrected as Jillian Cortese, not crazy. Goalie headed to Gettysburg. And we should be underway shortly, uh, Ethan. And uh, as we mentioned in the uh, in the pregame, they've met twice. Lenape came out on top both games, uh, only by one goal each. So they're familiar with each other and. You know, as the saying goes, it's it's kind of tough to uh, beat or lose uh, the same team three times in a row. We'll see what happens because we're getting ready to see probably a very, very great playoff game here in the second round. Absolutely, and you had mentioned earlier that Shawnee has won eight, eight straight coming into today. Yeah, their last loss was uh, almost a month ago, and that was at the hands of Lenape. They whipped off eight wins in a row. They had the last week of the season, they had big upset wins against Eastern and Moorestown. They won the first round, as did uh, the Lenape um, of the South, the quarterfinals, I should say. And uh, we're ready. I think both teams are ready. And this is, this is uh, scoring opportunities is going to be uh, very, very important to capitalize on any scoring uh, possibilities for either team today. Yeah, absolutely. Just to add on to one point with Shawnee coming in eight straight wins, you know, that adds a lot of momentum coming into the day, you know, especially like big wins you said over Eastern, who overall for the season is 15 and three and Morristown as well, who is another very good school. You know, that, that can carry you a long way, knowing that if we can beat them, absolutely, we can surely beat, we can surely beat anybody in this league. So. Right, absolutely. And Eastern, as I said, uh, they're, they're playing Cherokee today. Eastern comes in naturally as the first seed. Cherokee, the fifth seed, they're, they're playing also today. The winner of today's game here will play them in a couple days, uh, the, the winner of Eastern and Cherokee. So uh, best of luck to everybody concerned. Absolutely. We have both starting lineups uh, approaching the field here. Face off for Lenape, number nine, Gianna Monaco. For Shawnee, number 35, I believe, Sammy McDonald. And we are underway. Battle for the first faceoff. Lenape picks it up, Gianna Monaco. She passes it off. Lenape takes it back, back around.
Good defensive presence by Lenape so far. Pass inside. And good D collapsed in. Looks like she couldn't get a shot off, and it looks like a turnover there. Shawnee's coming down. Yeah, and Shawnee, I'm sure, is going to be king on uh, number nine, Gianna Monica, with the 83 goals, even though she's only a freshman. Here's Shawnee coming down quickly. And Shawnee takes a behind goal. Sorry about that, it's very hard to see. Looks like, but looks like Shawnee will keep possession. Yep. And they take it back up top. Keeping composure, trying to set something up. Opening possessions in sports in general, obviously huge. And Shawnee with the control right now. Yeah, they're taking their time. They want to make sure, they want to make sure they have a great shot here. Oh, it looked like number 35, Sammy was ready to shoot, and I think we we're going to get a, have a penalty, penalty shot. Looks like Sammy's going to take it. Sammy with 33 goals on the year. Good save. What a save by Jillian Cortese. But unfortunately, Lenape turns it over, and Shawnee's coming right back down quickly. I think that was Julie Cassidy breaking through. It's going to draw another penalty shot, I believe. Indeed, we will have another penalty shot here for Shawnee. And this time it's in. Lower left-hand corner by Julie Cassidy. Just notched their 63, 63rd goal of the year. Shawnee goes up, one nothing. A lot of pressure here, Ethan, on, on both penalty shots. Uh, that's, that's why the whistle was blown in both times because Shawnee did have possession. They had two cutters and uh, had great scoring opportunities. Lenape's defense had something to do with that, but unfortunately resulted in two penalty shots, and, and uh, the Renegades, uh, you know, got one out of the two. And here we have a face-off in the middle. We'll see how Lenape can counter here. We'll see if Shawnee can continue their momentum getting the opening possession here. And here's Lenape. Lenape coming right back down. It's Kylie Bresley. Okay, she put some pressure on, and uh, I believe it's going to be a penalty shot for Lenape. And she gets it in. High shot by number 15, Kylie Bresley, one of the captains, ties this game up. So we've so far we've seen some some pressure on on the you know the ball carrier and had great opportunity to score. The defense had to come up and uh, do something about it, and they did. They got the penalty shot, but that was I thought that was a save from our angle, but it was a high in the upper left hand corner of the net. <laughs> and here we have another face off in the middle. Both teams attacking quickly early. Shawnee taking their time. We saw earlier, Lenape hasn't gotten a real good possession just yet, just the goal earlier. Yeah, looks like Mom, they're going to redo the uh, draw, I believe. Now Lenape's going to have it. Okay. Hey, 
Bad pass, ball on the ground. That's going to go against Lenape. Shawnee's going to get possession here. As number 10, Jamie Carvin, looking to get it back into the game. There she is. And here's Shawnee coming down. Pass behind the net. Good defense. Cut on the inside. Oh! And she bounces it in. Look like number 21, Lauren Jogues with the ground shot. Bounce right over the stick. Shawnee takes the two to one lead. I think this is going to be this way all afternoon there, Ethan. We'll see both teams coming out here very fast, very, they're very ready. It's the word that but, first but comes yeah, to mind. That's, that's a great word, word, way to put it. That both teams are ready. That looks like number 48, Kyle Lumberg, is going to be taking the draw for the Renegades. And I believe that's number nine again, Gianna Monaco for the Indians. Lunapy picks it up and yeah, it looks like they'll keep possession. down. Yeah, they'll keep possession. It's Allison Halfpenny behind the net. Looks like Lenape turned it over and it'll be possession going to Shawnee. And they're coming down here very fast. I have a whistle, the ref was counting the players on the field, I was wondering if there's too many, too many girls on the field. No, I don't think so. He's gonna have a penalty shot here though. Oh, Bounces another, it again. Another ground shot goal. And I believe that was 21 again. Lauren Jobes. That makes it three to one. Two goals by Lauren Jerb, one of the captains of Shawnee, makes it a three to one game. Certainly at this point in time anyway, I know it's very, very early in the game, but uh, Shawnee's uh, capitalizing on their opportunities. Absolutely. Kayla Lumberg again in Monaco in the draw. And let's, let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Here's the last penalty shot. As you can see, just bounces right in there again. Yeah, too, both, uh, both their scores on the, on the penalties. Uh, Ground shots. <coughs> and Lenape will take it back behind the net, looking to see if they can stop. This momentum is Shawnee has scored the last two. Kylie Bresley over to Caroline Barlow. And Nielsen looking for behind the net, and that's Allison Halfpenny. Good defense by Shawnee, keeps Kylie Bresley out from within the middle. She's forced to pass it behind the net. And it's in. Couldn't tell who that was, we'll see. I think uh, number 13, possibly, Lauren Dixon. Wouldn't be surprising, because she's uh, second in goals on the team with 33 coming into today. See if we can get confirmation on that. 
Right now I have number 13, Lauren Dixon is the goal scorer. Okay, we got confirmation it is number 13, Lauren Dixon. Now Lenape cuts their lead, or excuse me, their deficit in half. Not only down by one. Kylie Bresley wins the face off here. And another shot oh. on goal and she gets her second of the day. Coast to coast by number 15, Kylie Bresley from the draw all the way down to the field, untouched. Ties this game. It's 17.48 left in the first half. And let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. We're just catching it right at the end of it. Just great effort, individual effort by number 15, Kylie Bre Bresley, her second goal today. Locked at three. And she'll take this face off again. And Shawnee wins it here. And Sammy McDonald with it. And they're coming down quickly. Pass behind the goal. Yeah, way high, I don't know if her stick got uh, deflected, but Shawnee keeps possession here. Looks like some sort of interference. And it resulted a penalty shot. Looks like 21's taking it again, Lauren Jobes. And it's in, slipped in right underneath. Number 21, Lauren Jobes. And let's take a look at the LDTV Sports Replay. Here we have the penalty shot just now. Right between the legs, Lauren Jobes. Face off in the middle, balls in the scramble, and Lenape picks it up. And they're coming down quickly, Gianna Monaco. And she passes it behind goal. Be keeping their composure. Move it back and forth up top. We're going to get another opportunity here to tie this game. And this is the time where, again, not getting caught up in the moment. Get some possession, look for the cutter, see if they get a nice clean shot off. for the cutter there. What, it was intercepted. Great defensive play there by the Renegades. Lenape still keeps possession. <laughs> I think uh, Gianno, Monica may be getting a shot here. The stick was up in the, up in the face. Yeah, it definitely looked like she got hit and looks like she'll be taking a penalty shot. Oh, great no save. No good there, good save. And that's number 72, Ashley Vernon. Only for the Renegades making the save. Bad pass there, and Lenevy picks it up. Lenevy will get another opportunity here.
Again, keeping their composure. In no rush at all. 14.40 left in the first half. Moving it around, taking their time. A lot of movement in front there, looking for somebody open. Really not much open there. And there is going to get a whistle against Shawnee. A restart. Be a penalty shot for Lenape. Just high. I went in as a high shot, and uh, number 12, I believe that was Caroline Barlow, scores. Tie up the score, 4-4. Four, four. Number 20, see number 22 for the Renegades, Meredith Farley getting into the game. And number 29, Catherine McGlynn coming out for a breather. 13.30 left, what we expected folks, 4-4 score in the semifinal group four matchup. Again, they're staying with number 15, Kylie Bresley. And let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Here we have face off with. And we're back live. We'll see if we can get that a little bit later. Oh, on, After the whistle, one up, he keeps possession coming down the midfield here. Here's Kylie Bresley coming down very fast. Again, there's. Uh, Strong defense by Shawnee, but I think uh, Lenape is going to advance here with another shot, with a penalty shot. Kylie Bresley. She'll pass it back behind. Let it be keeping their composure. Triangle! Yeah, it looks like Lenape, when they have possession, they, uh, they, they're taking a uh, much longer time to set up. Uh, Shawnee is maybe a little bit more aggressive when they have the possession, but uh, again, we're, we're, we're not at it four. We're gonna get another whistle. Another shot, I believe this time will be number 10, Lauren Conroy, I believe. Shot in a 10. And Lenape gets their first lead of the day. And again, that was number 10, Lauren Conroy on a penalty shot, one of the freshmen on the team. And I know Ethan, the, uh, Coach McCarthy mentioned that uh, you know the, the senior leadership is on their defense, and they have a lot of young people. And, and we look at the roster; I think five starters are freshmen. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. <laughs> Here we have it, right down underneath. Lenape gets their first lead of the day. And Shawnee picks it up, coming down very quickly. It's a leading scorer. And, and shot at its end. I believe that was Julie Cassidy. 
The team's leading scorer from the get-go went right down to the field, right down the field, scores her second goal of the day and ties it up at five. So as you see again, not mm -hmm. too much possession. Uh, you know, they, they go right down to the gut and uh, either getting a call or the goal where you do see more composure on the offensive side as we'll get the replay here. Let's take a look at that LDTV Sports replay. All individual effort by Julie Cassidy. Really at a, a, not a great angle for a shot for the shooter, but uh, got it in. And Shawnee wins the second face off here. They tie this game up. We'll see if they can take the lead again. Now with Farley with the ball. Sammy McDonald. Back to Meredith Farley. She takes it inside. Good defense there by the Indians. Had a good shot attempt, but it was blocked out by one of the defensemen. Shawnee keeps possession. Good defense. Excuse me, good defense there. Another great save. Good defense and also a great save again by uh, Jillian Cortez. And Shawnee will keep possession here. As they keep their composure. Good defense there. Ball's on the ground. And play is stopped. And if they want to keep possession, that's a very aggressive defense by the Indians. Results in a turnover. And Shawnee gets it right back. Shawnee on the inside. Looks like he got batted out. Well, I think they a couple sticks up high there. It's going to go against Lanape. Looks like number 22, Meredith Farley, is going to take the shot. Pass. Right underneath, and it's in. And Shawnee takes back the lead. Was number 10, I believe, on the goal. Lauren Conray, if that's true, that's her second goal today. Breaks the tie. Eight forty-nine left. Shawnee up by one. Again, Kylie Bresley for the Indians taking the draw. I believe it's still number 48, Kyle Lumberg for the Renegades. Balls up in the air. Staying correct there. It was number 14, Julie Cassidy on the draw. And Kylie Bresley picks it up. And she's coming down very quickly. Ball comes out there, but... Another whistle here. Like number 15, Kylie Bresley, going to try to get it a hat trick here. And it's like shot just missed goal, but Lenape will keep possession. Again, at Lenape, no rush. 
Trying to keep that composure, looking for the cutter. Getting a quality shot off to tie this game up. And if he continues to move it around now, back behind the goal. Pass in the middle, shot. I don't know if that was a save or not. If it was, it was a heck of a save because there wasn't much uh, possession there by number 15, Kylie Bresley. He's like, got the pass and got the shot off very quickly. And if he still keeps possession. Lena Nelson. Ball goes back up top. Half penny, number three with the ball. Seems of movement. That's good offensive pressure, a good defensive pressure, and, and a save by Ashley Vernon. Hard to see what exactly happened, but look, good defense. You know, everyone. Compacted in, it looked like the ball went inside at one point. We see them right in front of us, number 27, Emma Sears, with the ball. Shawnee's going to. Okay, Shawnee's going to keep possession. Just a little bit too quick on the restart. The ref uh, blew the whistle to get it restarted again. 27, Emma Sears. And Sammy McDonald. Looks like she fell and lost the ball. That'll be a right, Shawnee turnover. All right, I'm forced there, unfortunately, just tripped. And Lenape's coming down very quickly. Looks like number one, Audrey Cashin, one of the freshmen out there, was bringing the ball down. As looking to set it up again. 35, Sammy McDonald coming out for the Renegades. Looks like number four, Ava Stilau, going in for Shawnee. Pass back behind. And Lenape keeping it slow, keeping it under control. Just over five minutes left. Again, the shot that they want. It's going to be a quality shot, absolutely. Behind the net, again, that's half penny. Loose Looks like ball here. came out. Still no possession. And Lenape's gonna keep it. Kylie McNamara with the restart. Pass inside, shot on goal and oh, it's in. What a great setup. Beautiful play there. Right after the stoppage of play. And I believe that is, I will see the replay. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Number three, she made the cut inside. That is Allison Halfpenny. Allison Halfpenny, she had it first behind the net, passed it out and got it back. And we're tied up again. With 434 left in the first half. Face off balls up in the air. And possession picked up for Lenape. The ball comes out and Shawnee picks it back up. And Shawnee's not coming down very quickly. Looks like she lost the ball and there'll be a stoppage of play. Shawnee's gonna keep possession. Nice spin move by Cassidy. A high shot on goal shot and it's in. And a score. 
Hat trick for number 14, Julie Cassidy. And Tony stops the Olympic momentum and as they go up a goal. Yeah, it's always important to try to, to get even or at least get possession and change that momentum around. And we'll see what the Indians do here with 3.53 left in the first half, down by one. like Cassidy's going to take our goal scorer, our three goal scorers today, Julie Cassidy on the draw. And again, number 15, Kylie Bresley for Lenape on the draw. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Here we have, she just cuts right across in the front of the goal and just shoots it and it's in. And, Leonard, and excuse me, Shawnee wins this face off here and they're coming down. Nice move by McDonald. Good defense there. Equal, great move by the Lenape defense. You're absolutely right. Looking to break it out again. And Lenape's coming down here quickly. They'll take it back behind the net, looking to set something up. Ball's back up top. Lenape may be happy of taking some time off the clock here with under three minutes left and getting a quality shot to tie this ball game up. And taking their time like they have all game. Making sure they get, they get the shot they want or a penalty. Setting up on the right side now. Kylie McNamara back out up top. Pass on the inside, good move, oh. and it's in. And that's, I believe, number nine, Kyle, uh, Gianna Monaco with her first goal today. Great fake up top, just dipped it right in underneath. And I'm sure Lenape, or excuse me, Shawnee's been keying on Monica. All, all the time since she has 83 goals. Uh, and she finally got one and it ties it up. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Yeah, just a great cut and she didn't miss. That's one of the reasons why she has 83, now 84 goals this season. And this game stands tied with 2.20 left in the first half. Another face off here, balls up in the air. And Lenape picks it up. Kylie McNamara. And here's Lenape coming down with it. Ball's back behind. And let it be doing what they, they've always had, have done, taking their time. And behind the net, coming on a one minute mark. Let it be continuing to move around here. And looking for that perfect shot with time running down in the first half. Monica's trying to get loose, but uh, good defense there by the Renegades. He's going to have a chance here, I believe, to uh, go ahead with uh, 39 seconds remaining. 35 in that area. 
35. No initial shot on goal. Okay, we saw a high stick up here, and I guess that's what's getting caught. Let it be looking to get the final shot on goal here. And there you have your first half. And this Shawnee defense did not falter in that three minute uh, time of possession for Lenape. They did manage to tie it up and uh, it's what we expected. Tied yeah, up going absolutely. into the half. You know, back and forth battle, you know, neither team choosing to give up, you know, Shawnee opens up and as you see your halftime score, 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what the coaches could possibly tell each team at halftime other than both teams are doing an absolutely great job and they're, they're, they're not uh, letting uh, the environment and the, you know the pressure with everybody here get to them looks like they're um, both teams are doing great that's why we have the 7-7 tie and we'll be right back after these messages with the second half of today's game today's game on LDTV sports sponsored by Deborah Heart and Lung Center. For care that's extraordinary, demand Deborah.org. Comegno Law Group, specializing in general and special education law, representing individuals, families, public boards of education, and independent schools. 888 313 IDEA or ComegnoLaw.com. Zally's Fresh Kitchen Catering at ShopRite of Medford. For parties large and small, business and family, and more. Fresh ideas, fresh ingredients, fresh results. 855-ZFK-MENU or on the web at zallysfreshkitchen.com. And by Heads Up, Eyes Forward. Please never drive distracted. www.lrhsd.org slash heads up. For information on how your business can become a sponsor of LDTV Sports, contact Joe Malagrana, LDTV Underwriting Manager at 609-268-2000, extension 8680, or by email, jmelagrana at lrhsd.org. We're here today to uh, support SOS, support our students. Um, they're an organization that are trying to uh, get the budgets a little bit better for the school districts in New Jersey. The mission of this rally is to shed light on the, on the fair funding formula, which is not a fair funding formula. We really have to think about the education of our children in the state of New Jersey. New Jersey is known for producing graduates prepared to succeed. The Lenape Regional High School District is one of those districts that help New Jersey boast such great success. If we don't find a better way to create revenue and fix the flawed school funding formula, our districts and our state's great reputation for student success is at risk. We want to just get the word out to the uh, New Jersey Senate that they need to change the funding formula uh, to make sure that uh, funding across the state of New Jersey is fair for all public schools and for all public school students. I'm here today to help support fair funding for every school because each child needs an equal education and have an equal opportunity because we're our future. We're going to be cut about $8.3 million over a course of seven years and over $24 million to our region and we're here so that the local legislators, the people that are making decisions on where the money is going to go from the state of New Jersey, we're here so they hear our voice, so they understand that these cuts will hurt our programs for our students. I want for my younger siblings to have the same experience I had, which was amazing, and to, for them to have the same opportunities I did. It's important for us to be here to show character of our students and our faculty and what it means to us. Um, obviously, we don't think that they're fair to a lot of the schools and the stuff that's going on to um, you know, make uh, 
the payment for stuff for us that we have to pay is uh, much higher. So we don't think that's fair for everyone. So we're here today to kind of protest that and kind of voice our opinion and let, uh, let everyone else know that we don't believe that that should be happening. We're slated to lose a lot of money and uh, we've been doing, we've been very fiscally responsible over the years and we're doing everything we can and these, these uh, cuts in our state funding is going to hurt and we're trying to do everything to protect the programs and our, and our building. We want to get the governor's attention. We want to get the Senate Budget Committee's attention. We want to get the legislators' attention so they can understand that these cuts impact our students. These cuts are real. As a high schooler, you want to have opportunities and learn what you want to do and see what you want to have in your future. But if we cut funding, then you're technically taking away part of our future. We've come through and had such a good experience at Seneca, and we just want everyone else to be able to have that experience, especially the kids that are in Education Station now. They'll be going to Seneca, and I would just love for them to have the same experience that I've had not just through Seneca, but in elementary school as well. They have babies like infants there to after school like middle schoolers seventh grade mm -hmm. and we work there to help out the kids and I'd just love for them to have the same experience as us at Seneca. This is something that's going to directly affect the students of the um, school district so I think it's uh, really important for the students and the people that are actually going to be affected by it to be here and kind of giving their voice and making it known that uh, this is something that we care about and this is something that we're not going to just you know let happen we're going to try to do our best to help ourselves out. The time for our students and our staff and our community members voices to be heard is now because this is the time that they are going to be deliberating on the governor's budget. I think we all just need to um, raise our voices. We need to make it aware that this is happening and that it needs to be fixed and we should do that now. This is time for change now. The community members can get involved, they can write letters, they can call the governor's office, they can call Dr. Steve Sweeney's office, they can reach out to their legislators, and they can join these rallies. The people in the community should, you know, kind of take charge a little bit more, um, voice their opinions. A lot of people are kind of afraid to because they don't feel like it makes a difference, but it definitely does. Uh, I feel like if um, people just spoke out about the things that they believe in and... Um, we voiced our opinions and let people know and did more demonstrations like we're doing here today, then I think that that can make a difference. Connect with the Lenape Regional High School District Highlights page on Facebook to see outstanding achievements of our students and staff. Just type LRHSD Highlights, hit like, and you'll get the latest updates on achievements in academics, extracurricular activities, community service, and athletics from all four of the Lenape District's high schools. From success in the classroom, to volunteering in the community, to milestones on the court. There's a lot to like with the Lenape Regional High School District Highlights page. And welcome back to the second half of today's game. Score, excuse me, currently tied at 7-7 apiece. And both teams continuing to take the field here. Did you see the halftime score? 7-7, as mentioned earlier. Very competitive game, very, a game that's considered like a back and forth battle between both teams. No team really going on a big run. It is now time for the Access Equitable Silo Report, providing millions of customers with life insurance, annuities, and other need-based products since 1859. Access Equitable, be life confident, 732-452-7275. Well, let's send it over to Alexa Henry with the report. Thanks, guys. I had a chance to speak with the Shawnee Renegades, and they said all they want to do is to gain control of the draw and to pressure, their out and to pressure Lenape's outsides. I also had a chance to speak with the Lenape Indians, and they said they just want to control, to control and limit their turnovers. Back to you. Great. Thanks, Alexa, with the sideline report. And here you are getting started underway with the second half, and Lenape wins as the first face-off. And look like Gianna Monica was back in for the draw to begin the second half. And let it be again, taking their time as they did in the first half. So they will continue moving around. Here we go, Blue! Let's go, defense! 
pass on the inside. Oh. Lost at the last second. Just lost possession right before the shot. Would have been a quality shot right on with the goalie. And here's Shawnee coming right back down. Number 10, Julie Carvin gets back into the game. Julie Carvin gets a shot off, but it's good defense by the Indians and the shot must have possibly deflected, shot wide. Amy Carvin, one of the goal scorers today. Shoney, however, will keep possession. Good defense by Lenape. Not allowing much inside action for Shoney to set up a play. Pass on the inside, oh. shot underneath, good save there. Ball's up in the air, and Shawnee keeps possession. There's a great shot there by Sammy McDonald, but an equally great save. Again by Jillian Cortez. Shawnee more aggressive, another shot underneath, another good save. Ball's loose, but Shawnee again keeps possession. Bad pass, and now the ball's up in the air. And Lenape will keep possession as they're coming down. Kelly Monaco, she loses it and keeps it in the whistle. Pass on the inside, another missed pass. Balls on the ground. Again, you see the Shawnee defense just collapsing and uh, really not having a good shot to get on net. Both defenses doing a great job. The Shawnee is moving it up upfield. Ball slips out, no call. There's some contact there. Uh, some of the players on the sideline wanted a, wanted a call, but not going to get it. And here's Lenape coming right back down. That's Lauren Conroy, number 10, has one goal today. And Lenape will move it back up top. We got a play set up here. Five minutes in, score hasn't changed. <laughs> Let it be continuing with the same game plan as they had in the first half, right. keeping it slow, under control, waiting for the opportunity to come. Not forcing anything. Yeah, you'll see a moment where we'll have a lot of uh, a lot of movement, but right now they're uh, it's a perimeter game. Miss pass. For, looking for Barlow, but uh, the pass is a little high. Shawnee gets it. And Shawnee's coming down here quickly. It's Catherine McGlynn. And she might walk right in, she passes it off. Another pass and the goalie picks it up. Good decision there to interfere with the pass. All right, aggressive, aggressive goaltending right there. You know, you're always putting yourself at risk when you step out, you know. 
one mistake and it's an open it's an open shot on goal. And Lenape's coming down. And here comes Lenape. And they'll take it back behind. And a missed pass there. Shawnee picks it up. Great defense by both teams. Throughout this second half. Number nine, Kelsey Martin with the push down the middle of the field. You know, Shawnee looking to set it up here. Lots of moving for Shawnee. Sammy McDonald. Over to Farley. Pass on the inside. Back to McDonald, either deflection or save. In any case, Lenape has possession. Lauren Dixon. And Lenape gets it out, and they're moving it up. And here's Lenape moving it up, and another Lenape turnover, and Shawnee picks it up. And they'll move it back down. A number of turnovers here and slippage. One of these teams going to capitalize on these shortly, and Lenape is going to keep possession. And here's Lenape coming right back down. And they'll take it back behind goal. Looking to get a play set up. Take their time as they always do. Looking to get the right shot. Kylie Bresley coming to the sideline, talking to one of the coaches. Barlow looking to make a move. Can't get passed by the Shawnee defense. Dixon with the move. Looks like she passed it off. All right, nothing there. Great defense by the Renegades. But Lanape still has possession. Monica. Monica's like triple team there, and I think she's going to get a shot rewarded to her. See if she can get her second goal of the game and break this tie. Nearly 10 minutes without a goal here. Great defense by both teams. Lots of forcing lots of turnovers and good saves by the goalies. Shot on goal and it's in. That breaks the tie. Monica's second goal of the game. A little over 10 minutes without a score there. And we have our first goal of the second half. Right, and you saw, again, they're like double teaming, triple teaming Monaco. Um, and that, in that case, uh, drew the whistle and drew the penalty shot. Lenape goes up by one. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. And here we have that penalty shot. Just a great move by uh, Gianna Monaco. She will also be taking the draw. Just 
score currently stands. Lenape eight, Shawnee seven. We'll see what, if Lenape will continue their momentum as Kylie Bresley's coming down or will Shawnee counter and tie this game up. And a quick restart here by Lenape behind the net. Taking their time again. Presley with the move, but again, strong defense by Renegades. Oh, great save by Ashley Vernon. Lenape keeps possession. Back up top to Barlow. A lot of patience here by Lenape with the one goal lead. Plenty of time left. Ball back behind the net. Oh! Looks like Caroline Barlow gets her second goal. And it's going to be a two goal game. Two goal lead for the Indians. And that's our biggest of the game. You know, earlier they had a short lead of one goal, but Lenape, or excuse me, Shawnee quickly countered. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. He's going to have our first timeout. It's amazing that this is only the first timeout with this uh, going back and forth all day long. But it's a great timeout. And I'm assuming that Shawnee called the timeout after giving up two unanswered goals. We do have a time. A time. We'd like to also mention uh, the assistant coaches for the Shawnee Renegades. Again, head coach Julie McGrory. McGrory. She's assisted by Sarah Fitzgerald. Danielle Hubbs and Miranda Altringer. And for the Indians, the Homeland Indians today, Jill McCarthy, 12 years head coach, assistant by Christina Mall, Ali Latona, Jen Pfeiffer, and Jess Kolnicki. Great job all around by all the coaches involved in both of these fine, fine programs. As you see there, we have the timeout. Shawnee, we're assuming Shawnee called the timeout after giving up two unanswered goals, 13.06. In the second, Lenape's up by two. As we see there, some of the stats for, again, Julie McGrory, fourth season as Shawnee head coach. Eight returning starters from 2018. So they have a very senior-laden team. And Jill, uh, opposite Jill McCarthy, head coach for Lenape, 12th season as Lenape head coach. Career coaching record 184 and 78. Very, very impressive record. And a great job by both coaches and all the players involved. Coming out of this timeout, Shawnee definitely needs to try to break some of this momentum of these two unanswered goals by, by the Indians. We'll see what uh, Coach McGrory draws up to see if they can get back into this game. Not that they're out of the game with only two goals, but like you said, it was uh, almost 10 minutes uh, before we did have a goal in the second half. As we'll get ready for the draw again, again to be Monaco against Lundberg. Uh, check that out. We'll be going to Julie Cassidy now for the draw for Shawnee. And as I noticed in the first half, Shawnee very aggressive, and you know they got a lot of success from it. Obviously, scoring seven goals and keeping the competitiveness with Lenape. But second half, we haven't seen that. You know, we're almost halfway through, and Shawnee still hasn't scored a goal yet. So we'll see what they can do coming out of this timeout. Falls up in the air. Looks like Lenape's gonna get it. They've been winning the draws. 
One of the reasons why they're up by two. As soon as they get possession, they, they calm things down. Especially more so now with uh, the two goal lead. With just under 13 minutes left in the second half. Indeed, they can use all the time that they want to. Looking for a spin move there was uh, Kelly Monaco, nothing there. Barlow to the back of the net. I think that's Conroy now with possession. And back out this time to number 13, Lauren Dixon, who has a goal today. Kali McNamara. Back to Barlow. Half penny. In behind, back in the net. Looking to make a move. Oh, just missed. Number 15, Kylie Bresley with two goals today. Had a good shot. Looking for the ground shot, but it went wide. As Shawnee is going to get possession here. See if they can move it back downfield. Cut into this two goal lead by the Indians. And let alone get something on the board in the second half, yeah. Number 24, Macy Moore with a head of steam for the Renegades. Shoney takes it back up top. McDonald. Nothing there. Good pressure by Lenape. Keeping her out, not letting her do anything she was planning to. Pass on the inside, shot underneath, and it slips right in. Shawnee finally gets on the board in the second half. Cutting their lead in half. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports Replay. Okay, look like number 21. Uh, Lauren Jobes, one of the captains, uh, if my c calculations are right, that's her fourth goal today. Cuts the lead to one, 10.49 left in the second half. Face off is up and Lenovee wins again. Again. Monaco coming down. We'll take it back behind. Pass on the inside, oh. and it bounces right in. Oh, a little misplay there. Not playing at all, but goes in Lenape's favor. Yeah, it looked like uh, lost possession and probably just changed the, you know, the defensive stand of uh, Ashley Vernon and somehow it gets into the net. That could be a big goal, two-goal lead with 10 minutes and 17 seconds left. And let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. And looking for the cutter. So you can see the pass. Pass on the inside just wasn't received, but it's, she right. just misses the catch. Yeah, off of number seven. And Selena Nielsen with her first goal. Kind of on a, a misplay and, and kind of an unfortunate goal for the Renegades. That could be huge today. We'll see if Shawnee can cut back into this deficit. They got one goal in their last possession. We'll see if they can get another one here, keeping the momentum going for themselves. Not letting the unexpected mistake. Oh, they're just kidding. They get it in. Back in. 
Number 21, I believe, again. Lauren Jones, that's her fifth goal. Cuts the deficit to one again. Wow. Yep, number 21 with her fifth goal today. We'll Let's take again. a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Just behind the net. Upper right hand corner. And Lenape wins it again. Yeah, again. Dominating here on the face offs. I think that's going to get a whistle. And a card. A yellow card on the cross check or trip by number 14, Julie Cassidy. So Renegades are going to have to uh, buckle up the defense here. Kylie Bresley coming down quickly. Oh. And it's in. Looked like a, it was going to be a pass. But again, lower left-hand corner. Another huge goal by the Indians taking advantage of the penalty. And again, that might have been number 10, Lauren Conroy. If that's the case, that's her second goal. Again, from a really, really wide angle shot, managed to find her lower left hand corner of the net to put Lenape up by two. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. It's hard to see there to confirm that she was the goal scorer, but yeah, we're certainly an unexpected play again. A pass did come from back out. Uh, and we don't know if uh, number 10, uh, Lauren Conway, got her stick on it or not. But right now we're going with uh, number 10, Lauren Conroy. And Shawnee change, wins we'll the face know. off. There we go. And Shawnee takes it back. Shawnee can't have any turnovers here. They're going to have to get it down to that offensive possession. It's Macy Moore again blowing down that right side. She did this before. Got the McDonald. Farley back to Farley. Marcy Moore. Looking to see what she has back to Farley. Good defense here by the Indians. Loose ball, but Shawnee keeps it. Excellent pressure from Lenape. Making Shawnee Carvin. work for anything they want to get going. All right, these, uh, Jamie Carvin's going to uh, draw the, the restart. And a great Shot save. Shot on goal a save. By Jillian Cortese. That could be a big save with uh, just over seven minutes left. Two goal lead by the Indians. Julie Cassidy getting back in for the Renegades. Just over seven minutes left. And Lundby taking the ball back behind net again. Pass on the inside. Not a good look there for 13. Lauren Dixon.
We'll see if they can get something going. Again, Extending really, their lead to three, that would yeah, be huge really, for them. Again, really no rush for the Indians. With uh, 6.45 left. Yep, with two goal lead. They have a little cushion here. They want to make sure they get a good shot off and definitely not turn over without at least a good shot. Kelsey Presley back to Barlow and gets knocked down. And Barlow's going to have a chance to pick up her third goal. And it will be a three goal discrepancy, and that would be pretty, pretty big at this stage with six minutes left. Like uh, 22 for Meredith Farley with the cross check. And she goal scores. It's in. Hat trick for Barlow. Three goal lead for the uh, Indians with 6 10 left. That's a very, very big goal. And he's going to have to, a uh, little sense of urgency here, and it's going to start with a timeout by the Renegades. And after that, it's going to start with see who wins the draw. Let's take a look at the LDTV Sports replay. Barla just goes all in, and we catch it right at the end for her. Third goal of the afternoon, and Caroline Barlow headed to the College of New Jersey. Senior midfielder. We also have Kylie Bresley going to Montclair, Aaron Scioli to Rowan, and Jillian Cortese to Gettysburg. Well, best of luck for those ladies there. As we see the Renegades looking to Try to come out and change this momentum down with uh, just over six minutes left. They find themselves down by three goals. You see there now again, Coach McCarthy of the Indians going over what the Indians have to do to make sure they don't have any turnovers and make sure they continue the ferocious defense that have, they have been doing all afternoon. It's certainly limited. Limited Shawnee's offense, you know, scoring two goals when in the beginning Shawnee was pounding at them, keeping the lead early, and now they sort of seem to slow down a little bit. And Lenape's defense has certainly picked up, and, right, and Shawnee has not been able to do much. You're right, Ethan, especially in the first few minutes uh, of the first half, Shawnee went out the three to one lead, and uh, but then we saw we were on a seesaw a lot till the last two or three minutes where. Uh, the Indians, as we said, winning most of the draws, a lot of possession, a lot of composure, and uh, getting good quality shots off or drawing the penalty. Okay, looks like Monaco is going to take it again for the Indians, and Julie Cassidy will be taking the draw for the Renegades. Change that to Kylie Bresley for the Indians. Big draw here. Ball is up in the air. And Sluice looks like Shawnee's going to get it. Jillian and, okay, got the whistle, but I think she's going to bring it back, but Shawnee still will have possession. Okay, have the restart there, but Cassidy still has the ball. And here's Shawnee coming down, ball's loose. Make a spin move there, but lost the ball, and Lenape's going to get it. Turnover that Shawnee definitely could not afford, and they're going to get another possession here after the whistle. 
And here's Lenape coming up quickly, obviously. No hurry at here, ball's on the ground. Again, the trip there by nothing to do with the Renegades defense though, as McDonald's coming up on the right side. Shawnee needs a goal. Carvin. Back of the net, Julie Carvin. Jamie Carvin, excuse me. Cassidy looking to make a move. Good Lenape defense pass on the inside. And balls up in the air. Sorry, that was 24. Macy Moore looking to make uh, a move. And we have a whistle here. Okay, Shawnee McDonald's gonna see if she can cut into the lead. Little double team. Shot on goal. Another Up save. No good. Shawnee keeps possession with four minutes left, down three. Aggressive goaltending in there by Jillian. And here Lenevy picks it up. That's a big turnover. Lenevy's gonna keep possession here. Times against the Renegades. And all Lenevy has to do is just chew some clock, keep possession as much as they can. Oh, no great deflection there. Great save. Sony's going to get possession, I believe. Nope. Indians will still have it. 2.55 left. Lend it be up by three in this semifinal game. Group four. Caroline Barlow. She drops it back. Presley. Good move there. One on one with the goalkeeper. Man's going to get the whistle. Presley's going to have a chance to get her third goal of the day. A lot of cheering here on the sideline. Lenape Indians can feel it right now. Two minutes! Okay. It looked like it was deflected. Two minutes left. It was a save there by uh, Ashley Vernon. Shawnee really is going to have to push it up quickly and get some quick goals here. Marcy Moore again flying down that right side. Here's Shawnee coming down very quickly. Obviously in an urgent situation. Cassidy gets a shot. Just but missed. Good opportunity there. Shawnee will keep possession. They're looking to set up Cassidy, but the Indians defense says no. Nice spin move, but I guess this is going to be against the Indians. It stops the clock, I believe, with 109. Let's see if we can re get, reset that clock here. Cassidy. With her fourth goal. Cuts the lead to two with it. one minute and 12 seconds left. This straw is going to be you, Jathan. And we'll probably see Kylie Bresley taking the draw again. 
It looks like 15 again. Kylie Presley will be taking the draw. And Cassidy, Julie Cassidy, our goal scorer with four goals, taking the draw. Very important draw here. This is huge for both teams. Shawnee looks Shawnee like they're going to get up. it. They got to get it down quickly. A lot of pressure here. It's going to get the whistle and a quick restart by Shawnee. One oh two left. Behind the net. Less than a minute left. Renegades down by two. Lenape is adding a lot of pressure. Gonna get a whistle to here. Handler. Stop the clock. Forty seven seconds left. Shawnee looking to Cut it to one. And we have a huge penalty shot here. Uh, and it doesn't save. go in. My, what a save. The huge most, save. Most opportune time for the Indians. And now with 40 in Lenape possession. There's not much left Shawnee can do. Does that look to run out the, cl run out the clock? Twenty-two seconds left. Fifteen seconds left. And there you have it, final score. Lenape 12, Shawnee 10. As Lenape advances. Great game. Competitive first half on offense. Competitive second half on defense. Unbelievable. Great job by both teams. Great big saves there by, by Lenape's goaltender when it really counted. And great possession on the draws by Lenape then when it really counted. As a result, Lenape will go on to meet the winner of Eastern and Cherokee. Just a fine, fine game all around. Both teams should be very, very proud of themselves. And there you have the final score. Lenape Indians 12, Shawnee Renegades 10. A lot of cheering as we see. Again, the Shawnee team coming off. They're dejected, but they gave it their all. Great, great job by Letty Renegades. LDTV Sports Productions are available online at youtube.com slash Lenape District TV and for purchase at www.lrhsd.org slash LDTV copies. And our next game is this and to check out Lenape, excuse me, Lenape District Television's next game, you can check out our website for complete playoff coverage at www.lrhsd.org slash LDTV. Again, just an unbelievable game here. And we will be right back with play and player of the game. Today's game on LDTV Sports, sponsored by Debora Heart and Lung Center. For care that's extraordinary, demand Debora.org. Comegno Law Group, specializing in general and special education law, representing individuals, families, public boards of education, and independent schools. 888 313 IDEA or ComegnoLaw.com. 
Zally's Fresh Kitchen Catering at ShopRite of Medford. For parties large and small, business and family, and more. Fresh ideas, fresh ingredients, fresh results. 855-ZFK-MENU or on the web at zallysfreshkitchen.com. And by Heads Up, Eyes Forward. Please never drive distracted. www.lrhsd.org slash heads up. For information on how your business can become a sponsor of LDTV Sports, contact Joe Malagrana, LDTV Underwriting Manager, at 609-268-2000, extension 8680, or by email, jmelagrana at lrhsd.org. And welcome back. There's the final score of today's game. Lenape Indians 12, Shawnee Renegades 10. Excellent game today on LDTV Sports. Both teams very competitive in the first half, especially on offense, you know, with the score being tied at the end of the first half, 7-7. But what was most intriguing was when we opened up the second half and it took nearly 10 minutes, 10 minutes before, yep. before, both, before either team ended up scoring. It is now time for the Reconstructive Orthopedics Player of the Game, 1-800-896-RECON or on the web at www.reconstructiveortho.com. Let's send it down to Alexa Henry standing by for the interview. So you played a fantastic game, very close game, very exciting. What was going through your mind in the final seconds? Uh, I was just trying to get as many saves as I could, trying to hold the ball as long as we could. I'm really thankful for my teammates. They really came out big for us. Now, going on further into the playoffs, what were the team goals? Um, we have a really good team dynamic, and I think it's really shown on the field. And we play as a team, and I think that's really important. Well, great game, and back to you guys. OK, and again, that uh, Graphic was was incorrect. That was number 99 goalie for Lenape, Jillian Cortez with with 11 saves. Nothing was more important than probably the last two saves of, the, of that game because uh, on that penalty shot, uh, if that went in, it would have cut the lead to one. Anything could have happened. It was about a minute and 12 seconds left, if I remember. Great, great job again by goalie um, from Lenape, Jillian Cortez, and I mean I, I got to give. Uh, well, we'll get to the play of the game, and I'll see if I can finish that thought. It's it's time now to take a look at the Allstate Good Hands play of the game, sponsored by Michael McDyer, 609-654-1426, or at Michael McDyer at Allstate.com. Allstate, you're in good hands. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a big goal here by... Okay, that was Barlow, number 12, Caroline Barlow. And as, as I was saying, uh, that's your play of the game. But as I was saying before, we, we went to the graphic for the play of the game. Honorable mention, definitely I was going to say the Caroline Barlow had three goals. Uh, Kylie Bresley had two goals and also won a lot of those draws when it was really needed by, by Lenaby to keep possession as we see our final score there. As you can see right there, final score there, Lenape Indians 12, Shawnee Renegades 10. Thank you for watching today's game on LDTV Sports. And have a very wonderful evening.
This program was produced by Lenape District Television. Do you have a plan to increase security in places like that? The district has up-to-date and well-tested emergency response plans. 